Good morning, my fine feathered friends. I'm in a different room today because everybody's asleep upstairs. Mama Bunny and Daddy Ruff Ruff. I'm going to read The Cut Ups by James Marshall. He's funny. Look, someone put a Garfield sticker in the beginning of the book. Bud Jenkins and Joe Turner were a couple of real cut-ups. They made their mothers old before their time. To say nothing of Spud's little brother, Jerome. Oh my goodness. Being a cut-up was a full-time job. It required imagination. They're in the movie theater and they're making a joke to scare those people, they're saying. Do you have the snake? No, I thought you had it. And considerable skill. They ought to be locked up, folks said. Spud's tattoo parlor, five cents cheap. They were giving the neighborhood kids tattoos. I wonder what they used. Maybe Sharpie or Magic Marker. If it wasn't one thing, it was another. Oh no. They really wanted a swimming pool. Don't try this at home, kids. It's too late to separate them, said Spud's mom. School starts soon, said Joe's mom. Maybe we can hold out. What are they doing there? Those naughty little rascals. One afternoon, the cut-ups were relaxing between activities. Get away with murder, said Spud. That's because we're so smart, said Joe. Hello, boys, said a young lady. Her name was Frances. She drove her own sports car. Wow, said Spud and Joe. What a great car. They fell all over themselves trying to make a nice impression. You guys are real cut up, said Mary Frances. Where'd you get that car, said Joe. I built it myself, said Mary Frances. Ah, go on, they said. I did, said Mary Frances. And I built a rocket ship, too. <laughs> sure, sure, they said. I'll show you, said Mary Frances. Hop in. And she took them over to Maple Street. Street. Who lives here? said Joe. Oh, that's where dear Mr. Spurgle lives, said Mary Frances. Look at all those signs, said Spud. Those are just for grown-ups, said Mary Frances. 
dear Mr. Spurgle lets me play in his yard whenever I want. He just loves kids. He used to be an assistant principal. At that moment, Lamar J. Spurgle, who'd had enough of kids to last him a lifetime, was observing them through his high-powered binoculars. Oh, there's that brat Mary Frances Hooley, he said, and two of her little friends. If that kid's car so much as touches my yard, I'll grab it and keep it. Lamar J. Spurgle had a whole room full of kids' stuff. Mary Frances hurried them on by, and she took them to her backyard. Wow, said Spud, you weren't kidding. Does it fly, said Joe. Of course it flies, said Mary Frances. I don't fly it myself because I get nosebleeds. Let us, let us, cried Joe and Spud. Well, I don't know, said Mary Frances. Please! they cried. Mary Frances finally agreed to let the cut-ups make a test flight. Hot dog, cried Spud and Joe, and they climbed aboard. Are you ready? said Mary Frances. We are ready, cried the cut-ups. Mary Frances released the giant spring. The rocket zoomed in the air. Over the bushes it flew, past Lamar J. Spurgle's window, and smack into his prize zinnias. My zinnias! cried Jamar, Lamar J. Spurgle. Oh no, they ruined his prize flowers. Out of the house he charged. You'll pay for this, he cried. Holy smoke, cried Spud. Run for your lives. The cut-ups tore off down Maple Street, but Lamar J. Spurgle was gaining fast. We're done for, cried Joe. I'm going to get you now. This is it for you said he got them now. Mary Frances rushed into Spurgle's house and gathered up as much stuff as she could carry. Thanks, boys, she said, and she laughed all the way home. Will you look at that, Mary J. Frances? She sure is the winner of cut-ups. She collected all the toys that were in Spurgle's house. Just as Spurgle was about to pounce, his battery went dead. He had a battery-operated wheelchair. And you know what he said? He said to them while they were running away, I never forget a face! He remembers what they look like. There's the cut-ups on the stoop sitting there. Gosh, said Joe, that was a close call. I guess Mary Frances was wrong about that guy. Let's forget the whole thing, said Spud. School starts soon, and, and then we could really cut loose. But little did they know. that Lamar J. Spurgle had decided to return to education. And Lamar J. Spurgle never forgets a face. And that was the cut-ups by James Marshall. There's Joe and Spud. And there's our heroine of the story. Francis something hooey.
Francis, Mary Francis Hooley. She, I like her glasses and her car. Would you have fallen for her tricks? Hmm. Take care, guys. Have a good one.